So for the first few moments, what I really encourage is just really letting go, allowing, and noticing what happens. So this is a good way of putting it. See if for a few seconds you can completely let go of trying to manage or control your experience and then just note what comes into your awareness as you do that. Without judgment, without thinking it's supposed to be your breath or it's supposed to be your body or it's supposed to be whatever. So letting go of the control, relaxing very deeply and then just noticing what comes into awareness as you do that. Now, depending on your past, your history, you know, experiences like traumatic experiences, that might be terrifying. <laughs> Just that idea of letting go of control or allowing, uh, you know, the moment to be as it is without trying to manage it or control it, that might be a very scary prospect. So then you'll notice that, right? Ooh, that idea scares me. That terrifies me. I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, then that's what you notice, right? So again, there's no supposed to, there's no judgment, there's no right answer. For some of us, we let go of control and then we might notice our breath. And that tends to be very pleasant. For others, like I said, you might... I, even the idea of letting go of control brings up a type of terror or, you know, fear. The body tenses up. So then you just notice that, okay? Now let's shift our attention to our breath. Now in general, breath awareness is very calming, very relaxing. But I've actually worked with clients who, again, they've had a past of trauma. And so doing something like following their breath can actually be scary for them because they feel themselves letting go of control. And that to them is scary. That's terrifying. So again, as you begin following the breath, just notice your experience. What do you experience as you begin following the breath? And then we'll begin to deepen our breathing. So inhale, belly, ribs, upper chest. Exhale, upper chest, ribs, and belly. Breathing very deeply. And again, if everything is going as planned, this type of breathing tends to be both calming and energizing at the same time. That would be the ideal. But again, your experience may be different. So just honor your experience. Notice what your experience is. And again, if you're really struggling, then that's a good thing to mention to me. Okay? Now we layer one more technique, which is the ujjayi, that ocean sound. So at the back of the throat, like you're fogging a mirror. both on the inhale and the exhale. Very slow, calm, relaxed. Okay, so one of the main things that we need to do in order to do deep back bends is open up three uh, areas in the body. So one area is going to be the front of the hips and the thighs, what are called the quads. So we'll begin with a cattail. We're going to take that left leg up, drop it over to the right, prop the head up, our head up on the right hand and elbow, take the right leg, move it back, okay, and then we bend the knee and we grab the foot and we pull it in and we should feel a stretch, the front of the hip and the thigh. The front leg can be straight or bent and you can be quite aggressive with pulling that leg in and feel free to move the leg around a little bit and i actually can feel this in my back so again very intimately related 
with our back. So as I push my heel toward my buttocks, I actually feel it pull on my back a little bit. So that's that mechanism I'm talking about. So if we open up the front of the hip and the thigh, then potentially we can go a little further uh, into our back bends before we experience pain or discomfort that makes us stop. So we're still breathing in the same way, and that's going to, again, cue the nervous system of the body to relax the muscles that we are stretching actively. And let's release that leg and we'll roll back onto our back for a moment and just notice or feel both thighs. Hopefully you can feel the, the change or the difference between both sides. And now we'll do the other side. I'll just turn so I can continue facing the camera. So the right leg goes up. We drop it to the left. Take the legs apart, prop your head up. Okay, and then you bend that knee and you grab the foot. Should feel a stretch. And you can experiment with the foot position that may reveal, again, tension in the back or the front of the thigh, front of the hip. Good. And then we'll just release that foot and come back onto our back. Again, the both thighs now hopefully feel much more balanced. Let's bring both legs in now, and we'll give them a little squeeze. And then we can rock up to seat it. Let's come into a tabletop now, and we'll do a few cat-cows. So in today's class, this is going to be quite relevant, this movement. So inhale, tailbone lifts, belly drops, crown of the head up. Exhale, tuck tailbone, round the back, crown of the head down. And then we're just moving back and forth. And when you're doing the cow position, which is the back bend, okay, this position here like this, this is actually going to be the basis of our tiger pose. So you could say that tiger is a more advanced version, um, more challenging version of this cow stretch. This is called the cat when your back is rounded and then when your belly drops, it's the cow, okay? So in the cow, the tailbone lifts, the crown of the head lifts up and we'll be doing that in our tiger as well. Okay, so again, you can do as many of those as you like. Take your time warming up. And then when you're ready, transition to a down dog. We already got the front of the thigh, so you, your legs might feel somewhat warmed up already. But now we can get the calf and the ankle and the toes. And then when you've done that, you can come into your full expression of down dog. So hands shoulder width, fingers wide, palms flat, chest drawing toward the toes, feet hip distance, and heels reaching toward the ground. With the exhalation, walking the feet toward the hands. And then feel free to grab the opposite elbow. So for me, again, I like to share these things just so you know kind of what I'm speaking about. So a little bit of sensitivity in my back here as I hang. Not too surprising given the current condition of my back, um, but not nearly as bad as it's been in the past. So my back is 
somewhat healed, although not 100% at this point. Okay, arms relaxed. We inhale and gradually roll up to standing. I'm going to get rid of this sweatshirt, otherwise I'm going to be quite hot once we get going with our sun salutations. Okay, so let's do a few rounds of sun salutation. The feet can touch or be hip distance. Inhale, arms up, touch palms, lift the heart, and stretch the front of your body. So this is perhaps our first really active back bend. So see if you can find that back bend as stretch in the front of the body. Can you feel that? Can you find that? Good. As we exhale, let's come through the forward fold, bringing the palms flat. And then we'll inhale to fingertips or take hands to shins as we lengthen out the spine. And then planting the hands, stepping the right and then the left foot to the top of a push-up. Ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and heels align. Wrists directly below the shoulders, shoulders active. Take a nice deep breath. Let's drop the knees and we'll come down halfway. Elbows hugging the ribs, taking a breath here. And then with the next exhalation, coming all the way down. So since our emph emphasis today is back bends, let's take a little bit of time to explore the, the back bend, this first uh, floor back bend here, okay? So legs are together and gently pressing the feet into the ground. On the inhale, we'll lift the hands, head, neck, and chest. So we're just using our back muscles. The feet stay on the ground here. And again, notice how that feels. Even though I do quite a bit of yoga and I'm quite active, it still is work. I still feel kind of a hot flush happening. It's not like the most relaxing or comfortable thing to hold this back bend. So again, the essence of mindfulness is just noticing what we're experiencing without judgment and without reactivity. So we're just noticing, I'm feeling that hot flush. Um, you know, my breath is a little bit labored from doing that. So just notice what you experience. And then exhale, come on down. And then press back to tabletop and then tuck the toes for the downward dog. So yoga can really teach us a lot about how we react or respond to different situations. And it can get us in the habit of being mindful, especially in stressful situations. So I think backbends are uh, pretty good at that, along with some of the standing postures. Okay, let's inhale to our toes. We'll exhale to the front edge of the mat. We inhale to our standing back bend, and then we'll add a side stretch. So we grab the right wrist and exhale as we stretch the entire right side of the body. Then inhale to center, switch wrists, and exhale to the other side. Good. Inhale back to center, and exhale to a forward fold. Inhaling to half lift, and then exhale, left foot, and then right to the top of a push-up, plank pose. Okay, so knees up or down is your call. Take a deep breath, exhale halfway down. And then take a breath there, and exhale the rest of the way down. This time we explore flexibility rather than strength. So inhale, pressing into the hands. Lift the head, neck, chest, abdomen, but notice that my hips remain on the ground, okay? So that's gonna maximize flexion in my spine. You can see I don't have a super flexible spine, and that's just because that's bone. So bone doesn't change that much. That's not from tension. It's just more the shape of my bones and my spine. All right, exhale, come on down. Press back, or this time let's press up top of the push up and then exhale back to the downward dog. You can go through tabletop if you prefer. So, hopefully, those two cobras really 
um, help you see the difference between the strength in the back versus just the flexibility. The way we work them are different. So when we're emphasizing one, we're not emphasizing the other and vice versa. Okay, inhale toes, exhale front edge of the mat. Inhale standing back bend. And then exhale, stretch the right side. Inhale center and then stretch the left side. Inhale center and exhale into your imaginary seat. So here again, this tends to be a good posture to simulate stressful situations. Stress can be physical, but it can be mental, emotional as well. And again, how am I responding to the stress? What's happening in my body? What's happening to my breath? my pulse. Again, do I feel like waves of heat or sensation? Am I having kind of uh, doomsday thoughts? Like, I can't do this. It's too much. This is dangerous. Um, you know, can I stay calm and cultivate equanimity? All right, inhale. Let's come all the way up and back, standing back bend and exhale forward fold. Let's inhale to half lift and then this time if you're able, bottom of your push up, inhale to up dog, and then exhale do a push up on your way back to downward facing dog. All right, so again, the ideal is at this point, you're feeling some heat generated from within. I'm definitely feeling that. Before we started class, I was a little bit chilly, and the temperature in my room hasn't really changed, but my body temperature has from the movement. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, let's bring feet to touch. We'll inhale right leg up and back. Exhale the knee toward your belly, out to the right and back behind you. And just make some big circles and do a few in each direction. Then take a nice deep breath, exhale to a lunge and inhale to the crescent lunge, Ashta Chandrasana. Okay, so the front foot and knee point straight ahead. Knee lunging over the heel, back heel pressing toward the ground directly behind the toes, back leg straight, left hip forward, right hip back. And then again, especially this week, let's emphasize that back bend quality in the upper body. So shoulders back, hands back, gaze up, chest and belly, and especially the left hip. Left hip opening up. Good, take a nice deep breath. Exhale, bottom of the push up. Make your way to down dog. Side two, feet touch. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, left knee to the belly, out to the left and back behind. So just making a few circles and doing a few in each direction. Then we'll take a nice deep breath. Exhale as we lunge that leg and inhale to our crescent lunge. So again, this thigh is approaching parallel knee over the heel. And again, when this pose is done properly, this thigh, the front thigh is getting tired. The longer we hold it, the more tired it gets. And then this hip, the right hip on this side is getting a good stretch. And then again, that upper body is really vibrant. So right through the fingertips, try and send that vibrancy, that aliveness right through your fingertips.
Good, take a nice deep breath, exhale. Bottom of the push-up, making your way to downward dog. Okay, so I mentioned today's class is about the tiger pose, so let's take a look at that now. We'll come down onto all fours. So we can start again with the cow pose as the baseline. So dropping the belly, lifting the crown of the head up, lifting the tailbone up. So you can see my back is um, arching. Uh, and I am in a sort of a back bend. Now to complete tiger, I simply uh, can bring my knees together and then lift the right leg up. So the toes are reaching toward the crown of my head, the crown of head toward my toes. And some people can actually touch their toes to their head. So that depends on things like the length of your lower leg, the flexibility in your back, the length of your torso, the flexibility in your neck. Okay, so it's not just flexibility, it's also proportion. So again, the length of my lower leg, the length of my torso, that's gonna matter. All right, exhale that side, and then inhale the left side up. So this is the baseline tiger pose. Most people can do this without any kind of issue. The only issue I can think of is that the knees might bother you. Some people might be bothered by knees on the ground, in which case you can keep a blanket on your mat and place that under there. Okay, let's exhale that left side and then you can vinyasa or go straight back to your downward dog. So again, that particular version of tiger, not particularly challenging, I don't think. Um, but that will form the basis of some more challenging things that we'll do a little later. Okay, let's bring our feet to touch here. We'll inhale the right leg up and back into a three-legged dog pose, which is something we do quite often in this class. So the leg is straight, the toes, knee, and hip are pointing down. Let's take a nice deep breath. We exhale and lunge and inhale to a crescent lunge, Ashta Chandrasana. Good, then let's exhale, we'll just bend those arms, and then inhale to stupa, and then exhale, Ashta Chandrasana. Good, so just following the breath from side to side here. Good, now this time let's come on up and then we'll move into the goddess here. So the toes and knees are pointing out to the side, knees directly over the heels, thighs approaching parallel, and arms are mirroring the legs. Good, let's inhale, we'll come back up and exhale, cartwheel down bottom of your push-up, make your way back to the downward dog. And let's do that on the other side. So feet to touch, inhale left leg up and back, three-legged dog. From there, take a nice deep breath, exhale as you lunge, and inhale to crescent lunge. Exhale, bend those arms and then inhale to stupa, exhale, crescent lunge at the back. Good, just with the breath, front of the mat, inhale, exhale, back of the mat. Remember to feel the legs as you drop into the postures. And then this time, let's inhale and then exhale to a goddess. So we did goddess last week, if my memory serves. 
So again, this should be relatively familiar if you were here last week. Good, let's inhale back up and we exhale cartwheel down to the bottom of your push-up. Okay, from here we exhale into tabletop and we'll take another look at our tiger. So knees touching and then this time inhale right leg up and back, crown of the head toward the foot and then let's lift the left arm up pretty much as high as we can. So there's a diagonal left arm, right leg thing going on here. There definitely is a balance element to these postures. So you might be wobbling quite a bit. Good. Let's exhale that side and then inhale right arm, left leg. Vayagrasana in Sanskrit is the name of this one. Good. Exhale, release, and then make your way back to the downward dog. From down dog, inhale to the toes. Exhale, front of the mat. Inhale, standing back bend up and back. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale to half lift, or you could do crow pose here. And exhale to the bottom of your push up eventually coming back to the downward dog. Okay, so let's continue. Feet touch. Inhale the right leg up and back. And then we'll bend the knee and let the weight of the leg open up the hip. So this is a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a side bend happening here. From there, let's exhale and lunge that foot, and then we inhale up into crescent lunge. Exhale, just bend the arms. Inhale up into stupa, and then exhale to the goddess. So we're adding the goddess in. So pretty much this is the same as we did last week so far. It'll change in a moment. Let's inhale back up. Exhale, front of the mat. Okay, a couple more times. Inhale and exhale, goddess. Inhale, exhale, back of the mat. Inhale, exhale, goddess. Inhale, exhale, crescent. And then this time, let's inhale the arms up, exhale them out like wings, okay? Join index finger and thumb. And then with the next exhale, we kick off the back leg, pull the heel toward the buttocks, and have our head, neck, and chest facing forward. So this is the bird pose, Dvijasana. Good, take a deep breath, exhale, bottom of the push-up, and make your way to downward dog. So it's a back bend, it's a balance pose, there's a lot of different elements coming together there. And very much related with the tiger. Okay, side two, so feet touch, inhale, left leg, bend your knee, and just open up the hip and the waist there. Good, deep breath. Exhale, lunge in, inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, bend those arms. And then inhale, stupa, 
Exhale, goddess. Inhale up and exhale crescent at the back of the mat. And then we'll just repeat that whole sequence from start to finish. Okay, so we're coming back to the front and we inhale and goddess. Inhale back. Inhale, goddess. Inhale and exhale front. Now, as we come to face front, we'll inhale those arms up. Exhale the arms out like wings. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale to our bird pose. So again, see if you can find that back bend. So you're looking forward, not down, but your pelvis or your belly are facing the ground. Good, exhale, bottom of the push-up. One difference between the tiger and the bird is in bird pose, your foot is flexed and in tiger, your foot is pointed. So that is one difference worth noting. Might be seem like a small detail, but ultimately we wanna be aware of those kinds of details. Okay, so let's exhale to tabletop. Let's take a look at the uh, final version of Tiger that we'll do on the ground. So I lift that right leg up and then I take my left hand and I reach back and I grab at a diagonal the foot and then I'm actively kicking that foot and leg up. And again, notice my foot, it is pointed, not flexed, okay? Good, exhale, release. So you should feel a pretty powerful stretch at the front of the thigh, the hip, and the opposite shoulder. Let's take a look at the other side. Okay, so left leg, right hand, and then reaching back and actively kicking up. Good. Exhale, release, and from there, make your way to down dog. From downward dog, inhale to your toes, exhale to the front edge of the mat. Inhale, standing back bend, up and back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, crow or handstand, and exhale, bottom of the push-up, making your way back to down dog. All right. So, great work, everybody. If you're hanging in there so far, Let's bring our feet to touch now. Inhale, right leg. Bend the knee, open the hip, and then if you feel safe doing so, try flipping your dog over. And then you create this asymmetrical back bend. Okay. So again, stretching the front of the body, strengthening the back of the body. Good. Take a deep breath. Exhale as you lunge, and then inhale to, again, the crescent lunge. Exhale, bend those arms. Inhale to stupa. Exhale to goddess. Inhale back up. Exhale to crescent. Inhale the arms up, and then exhale to bird pose. Inhale, step back. 
crescent, and then exhale, bend the arms. Okay, so let's inhale back up, exhale, goddess. And let's do that again at the front of the mat. So inhale up, and then exhale, crescent lunge. Inhale, arms up, exhale, bird pose. And then from bird, sweep your right hand back, grab the foot if you're able to, and swing your left arm forward and do tiger pose, but balancing on one leg. So same idea, we're kicking that foot up and back. Should be a familiar action to you. Of course, it's more challenging to do it balancing on one leg, right? So we try to work our way up to that. All right, exhale, bottom of the push-up. And let's explore the other side. So feet touch, inhale, left leg, bending the knee, opening the hip, and then again, possibly flipping that dog over, giving yourself a good stretch. And then exhale as you lunge, inhale to crescent lunge, Exhale, bend the arms. Inhale, stupa. Exhale, goddess. Inhale, back up. Exhale, crescent at the back of the mat. Inhale, arms up. And then exhale, coming into your bird. Inhale, step back into crescent lunge. Exhale, bend those arms. Inhale, stupa. Exhale, goddess. Inhale, back up. Exhale, crescent. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, bird. And then uh, from bird, reaching back, left hand, right foot, Right arm sweeps forward, and then I kick that right leg up and back. And again, I'm looking forward, not down. Good, deep breath. Exhale, bottom of the push-up, making your way to downward dog. All right, super work, everybody. So that was definitely one of our peak postures. Let's come down onto the belly, take a moment of rest. So bringing the right hand over the left hand, forehead on the back of the hands. Just make sure that you know, you're still breathing with integrity, that you're not feeling overwhelmed, that your back isn't in a lot of pain or anything like that. My recommendation is if you do have a sensitive back or back problems, then just do as much as you can do um, without feeling like you are risking injury or you're in too much pain. So even if that's like a really tiny, tiny, tiny back bend, then that's what I recommend that you do. Just do as much as you can do. Because if you skip all the back bends, then you lose the benefit of back bending and backbending has a lot of benefits for you. And if you avoid a certain kind of movement, over time, you tend to lose the ability to do that. So it very much is a use it or lose it proposition. So we want to use our body consistently, okay? All right, so we stretched out the front of our body. We opened up the shoulders, the front of the thigh, the front of the hip. This is perfect for a pose called Danyurasana, which is the floor bow. So we've done this in other classes, but it's a great time to do it here. What we'd like is we'll bend both knees, and then we reach down back, and we'd like to grab either the feet or the ankles or the shins. Now here, your feet can flex or point. Either one's fine with me, okay? 
and then on the inhale, kicking up and back into the floor bow. So again, very similar to Tiger. We just don't have that diagonal element going on. Good, exhale, come on down. And left hand over right hand, forehead on the back of the hands. So again, have you returned to that mindful space? What do you find? I think the main thing that comes to my awareness, at least today, is just the heat. So the back bend generates a lot of heat in my body. I feel kind of a flush of heat as I release the back bends. Okay, let's press back to this position. This is called Vajrasana. So this is a, actually a meditation pose. And that's the basis for our next back bend, which will be the camel, Ustrasana. So make sure your knees and ankles are happy, but we'll bring our hips over the knees and we'll take the knees hip distance, feet hip distance, and some people like to tuck their toes because it raises the heels and it makes them a little easier to grab if you're going there. Hands are on the low back, pinkies touch, elbows in toward one another. And one tip I can give you if, if you've had pain in your back with this, try knees a little wider. Try knees a little wider than hip width, that might help. Okay. Inhale, let's lift the heart. And can you feel that stretch on the front of your body? I can. So even right here, I'm stretching the front of my body, right? If I feel safe, I can drop my chin back and I can also grab my heels, but still stretching the front of the body. Good. Inhale. Let's come on up and then exhale back into Vajrasana. Now again, if this hurts for some reason, just choose a different position to rest in, okay? So again, a lot of heat. Another thing I'm noticing now is my heart is really beating really fast. Okay, let's do one more uh, back bend, perhaps the deepest one. So cross those ankles, bring those legs out in front of you. And then inhale, arms out in front, exhale, roll back. And let's take a look at the upward bow, also known as wheel. And, um, but we'll start with a bridge. Okay, because bridge is, is more accessible. So feet and knees, again, hip distance or a little wider is fine. Pressing into the hips, we lift them up. And then you can interlace your fingers and pull those shoulders underneath you. So this is a good stopping point for somebody who doesn't have the flexibility or somebody who maybe is managing some injuries or issues in the shoulders or other parts of your body, maybe your back. If you'd like to go a step further, then we release those hands, bring them alongside our head, and then pressing into the hands and the feet, we come up into the upward bow. So again, take a few breaths in whichever back bend you've chosen. 
As you come down, let your knees knock. And just take a few breaths in constructive rest. So that one, really a combination of the two. I felt a lot of heat after I came out and then my heart, I could really feel my heart racing. So again, so valuable for those of us that have to work at a desk quite a bit. It gets us out of that comfort zone that we sort of stay in at our desk. So really, really good for us to do that from time to time. Let's let the knees just drop side to side now. And the idea here is just to let our pelvis rock a bit. Do as many of those as you like, but when you're done, you can bring the soles of the feet together, let your knees drop out to the sides. <clears throat> Good, let's take the left leg straight. The right leg will hug in. You can move that leg around a little bit. So I definitely feel the hip here. And I think that's just the result of, you know, what we did with those back bends. It really does work the front side of the hip. Okay. Just place that right foot on the opposite thigh and I'll just guide the knee down with my left hand and I'll extend my right arm out into a supine spinal twist. So you can let go of any deep breathing you're doing. Close your eyes. Good. So let's inhale, extend that leg up, and exhale, release the leg back down. Side two, so the left leg, we bring it in, and yep, definitely feeling the front of that hip now. Very tender. So I'm just trying to release some of that tenderness, some of that soreness, just hugging it in a bit, moving it around a bit. And then placing the foot on the opposite thigh, I guide the knee down, extend the left arm and look away from the knee. Inhale, let's extend that left leg up, and then exhale, bring that leg down. Okay, good. Let's bring both legs in now for happy baby. And this is called a Peter Pan when you have one leg straight and the other one bent. That's a nice stretch for the leg and the back. So I usually like to alternate that one a few times. But again, this is just sort of where you feel what you'd like to do with your body. Another one is legs straight, pulling them apart. 
or together and stretching your back. So right now my back does feel very sensitive. So this direction, me pulling in this direction feels sensitive. So I'm not going to overdo that. I can do it one side at a time, but both together is a little bit, a little bit much. Okay, so use the happy baby to release, you know, as much tension as you can within reason. And then coming back onto your back. If you have a, a, a timer um, phone with a timer on it, you can set that timer for five minutes, six minutes. And then what you'd like is to just relax on your back for that time. As I've mentioned in the yin class on Fridays, it's not as essential. It's still nice if you have time to do that, but not nearly as essential as it is in this class to just allow yourself to have a few minutes of stillness.